<laughs> Whoa, okay. Um, hello, I was waiting for that to hit there. It's probably a little bit of a delay. Um, uh, thank you, everybody, uh, for uh, watching. If you're watching this, if you're not watching this, forget about it. Um, this is a follow up to my awesome, uh, awesome stream on the Dune comic. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to be uh, talking about stuff that I just read just because I want to talk about it. So uh, this is a comic here that I've been uh, looking at for the past uh, year. I think about part one a year ago, I just finished part two, and uh, I thought it would be kind of cool to just kind of go over uh, exactly what's uh, going on here. Uh, so we got Black Bolt, right? Uh, Black Bolt is a thing. He's the king of uh, uh, Attilan, of the Inhumans, and um, he quiet guy. He can't talk. Uh, when he does talk, he blows things up. When he was a baby, I guess, he killed his parents or whatever with his um, powerful voice. So he's been given some kind of power. Uh, in fact, by reading this uh, comic here, you kind of find out that it was uh, cultivated in a way um, to become super powerful, like the next king of Attilan. So uh, I guess it's kind of not his fault. But um, as the title suggests, uh, I would say... You should call this comic the ballad of crusher creel because uh, he's actually the hero of this one i think as far as connecting emotionally or intellectually with any part of this comic it's um crusher creel also known as the absorbing man he's part of the wrecking crew and you find out a lot about his backstory too so you find out uh, the backstory of black bolt the backstory of Crusher Creel, everyone's backstory. You get to know people very well for the duration of this comic. So um, the timeline is in somewhere, I believe this is during. Volume 1 might be during Secret Empire. Volume 2 is definitely after Secret Empire because of his appearance of Captain America and he apologizes for the way he acted uh, during Secret Empire. And uh, uh, it's just weird. Uh, just, uh, just don't worry about it. Be good. So, uh, Black Bolt, artist guy, Christian Ward, not your typical uh, comic book art guy. He um, does not have that kind of comic booky style, but he's got a very interesting art style. You know, I just want to say right off the bat, you know, I like the art. You got some different things. Right off the bat, it starts with kind of a spooky prison scene. He wakes up, there's like this all this dark navy blue tones and a paint stroke kind of a feel to it some black in the foreground his chains are just kind of hanging there you get the idea there's some um, captivity going on here and he's got this pink glow of energy through everything that runs to this room here a nice uh, mood going on i think this all is uh, pretty cool you know it's just uh, a little bit different it's moody it's uh atmospheric it um it's got a different quality to it. This is going to be one of those coming out of the uh, gates, punching and fighting and throwing stuff and blasting things. Kind of a comic, you know. It turns out, in whatever dimension he is, whatever prison he's at, he has no power. Um, he has some physical strength. He's still good with his hands. As far as hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat and fighting, apparently he's got some physical um, superhero strength still. He's breaking his chains, breaking the bonds. It's kind of cool little, uh, not really explosion effects, but some tweaked out vector artwork that he has going on here. Uh, it's just kind of weird art. It's just trippy. This guy's just a little, a little different. Draw some decent perspective. It's got one of those little weird optical illusion <laughs> staircases. Uh, it didn't carry to the utmost limit, but we get the idea. His brother Maximus somehow um, switched places with him. Now he's in this prison. So that's the thing with Black Bolt. If you don't know that his voice is so, uh, it's rock and roll powerful that he can't help but destroy stuff. So he's quiet. He's got the muzzle on him. He can't use his voice. Um, later on, he's going to try and use it uh, to escape when he gets the opportunity to. But um, this is a weird little tale. He goes through, he hears a voice. It's this little kid. Uh, it's a girl. Uh, they call her Blinky because she's got like 20 eyes on her head. And so that's... Uh, Kind of funny. He's going to rescue her, but there's Crusher, right? This is Mr. Creel. 
Um, and so him, uh, he picks a fight here. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's kind of a one-sided little fight. They, uh, they get to rock. Oh, I'm way ahead of myself. They get to rock and sock him. Um, they fight. They become friends, him and Crusher. And um, they gather together a ragtag band of uh, prisoners here that go about causing them some trouble, causing some distress. Um, they find out who their prisoner is. They get this Amazonian kind of like scroll looking She-Hulk lady. He fights her. He earns her respect. Whatever. She joins the little entourage. Okay. Um, that's pretty pretty awesome. So, uh, anyways, uh, they get down to business. They find the um, the source of all the torment and the distress and everything, and uh, they uh, cause a little prison uprising. He finally gets his muzzle off. Uh, you're waiting for him to do it. You you wait wait like five issues in this book just to get Black Bolt to scream his voice and save the day. Happens twice, so uh, a lot of people don't like this guy's art, but um, I think I like it. Just little proportion problems here, but you know, who doesn't have that? <laughs> uh, got some eyeball bats, kind of shooting some stuff. You got uh, Lockjaw shows up to transport them all to safety eventually. Um, yeah, it's kind of just weird, tripped out on acid kind of thing um, I like I like about uh, I like about 60 70 percent of the art in this book it's uh, kind of different so uh, what ends up happening is um, since absorbing man they'll get their powers back they can't fight the uh, the jailer entity on their own or with their stuff so um, Creel sacrifices himself you know this villain uh, street level kind of a villain empowered by Asgardian uh, magic I believe he attributes that to Loki decided to give him this absorbing power um, the crushing crew half of them are all powered by Asgardian magic anyway but he um, he makes a sacrifice for himself he says promise Mary hey wishbone promise you'll find Mary you find her and you tell her that her man didn't want to leave her tell her her they had kids in here and that he's going to uh, tell Mary is Titania, you'll find out later on, which is all about. So anyways, Black Bolt like yells at him and the absorbing man absorbs his voice power, goes in there, blows up the prison or something and um, sacrifices himself. There's a big, huge explosion of someone's color wheel. <laughs> um, I don't know how you can do most of this art. You can probably just uh, photo bash some stuff together and mess with the blending methods. Uh, however he did it, you know, uh, it's just uh, quick and easy. I don't know if it's maybe it's quick and easy, but it's kind of an explosion. Kind of. Okay. Anyways, they all get to escape. Metal guy gets to go off. He makes his own spaceship and... Uh, this girl just kind of takes off on some jetpack or something. <laughs> takes off to her her um, buff lady planet. So she just kind of flies away. Metal Man puts together a little ship. And then Lockjaw takes Blinky and Black Bolt to Attilan. So he wants to find Medusa. So, all right, they take off. So that's book one. Um, it's kind of uh, it's kind of different. It introduces you to uh, you know Crusher Creel and his self-sacrifice. It's just kind of a good... It's kind of the emotional center of this whole thing. So, uh, let, me, uh, let me get out. And that's that's book one. Now, the thumbnail that I put on this stream is uh, the collected edition that collects both uh, Black Bolt 1 and Black Bolt Volume 2. So, um, now he comes home, and of course... Uh, I don't know what is it about today's uh, stories that all these king type people can't stay king for long. <laughs> They're like uh, Aquaman doesn't want the responsibility of king. Uh, you know, Thor, same thing, doesn't want to be king. He's supposed to be, but he's not. Got to have the ladies run it for him. Kind of a black bull disappeared. I don't know how he got down here, but you know, uh, 
Medusa was running the kingdom for a while, but she's also missing here too, which is, I don't know why. I'm not up on the Inhumans. But Christian Ward, just real quick before we go on, Christian Ward's got a... <clears throat> he's got a little uh, portfolio here online of the stuff that he does. I mean, I think some of it's pretty cool, actually. You see, uh, here's a new Avengers variant. You know, decent. I mean, I know you... Uh, I can see why you want this guy to do, like, variant covers. To have, like, your normal R's do this and have a variant cover with this is pretty spectacular, I think. Some of this stuff is use of color, contrasting colors. Like, this is my favorite color contrast here is blue and orange. Like, that, the extreme warm, the extreme cool coming together. All that using that white space in the middle. You know, pretty cool. Pretty cool arts. Um, I'm digging it. Uh, I like the Winter Soldier one that he has here. Um, there's Modoc. Check out Modoc. Like that? Eh, not really. <laughs> it, it's just different. You know, very uh, watercolory. Everything's very moody. Color is used to, to, to lay down the mood, you know, more than it is uh, to say this person's hair is red. But it, this is just not red, but it's fiery red, you know. That skull is not just gray and blue, but it also it's like uh, cold and hard and uh, hostile. So it's uh, purposeful. Obviously, this is the Black Bull cover. Big red heart kind of shape going on there in some form or another um, their love is like a hot flame fire that draws the two together across dimensions etc etc so that's kind of his artwork and i can understand like i said why you'd want to do like a variant cover with this guy uh, the interior artwork i'll say um to his uh I may call it. I'll give him the compliment that I like his panel layout a whole lot too. Uh, when it gets uh, done business, let me get some couple of good panels here. Wait, right, that's a, this is a different story altogether. I have to talk about that in a second. But he gets down to business with these kind of cool, um, spacey kind of like, hey man, uh, didn't get enough sleep kind of panel layouts. Like this kind of stuff is cool. You know, this panel right here doesn't even mean nothing. It's just. Uh, there, it just looks cool. So, um, these the Attilan security forces have um, confronted them as they come out of the portal with Lockjaw. There's all kinds of happen. Well, they come here, they get themselves all healed up. The Attilans aren't very happy to see him. In fact, they don't even know that it's him. Uh, they attack him at first, and then there's this story with his son, which doesn't really carry any really weight, I don't think, uh, for me when I read it. But um, the real emotional core is this woman right here. Um, it's Titania, or this is the Mary that Crusher Creel was talking about. This is his wife. You know. What are you doing with my husband? They started getting in a fight. And uh, to me, this kind of uh, clinched it for me. You know, where's my husband? Her and Black Bolt start fighting. You know, she can hold her own, he can hold his own. It's not going anywhere. And then Blinky steps in the middle and says, uh, Crusher wouldn't have wanted this. And so this stops her in her tracks. What do you mean he wouldn't have wanted like he's dead? Like past tense, you know? And so because Blinky's like this empath, she is able to um, communicate non-verbally, show people her memories, the emotions. I think she's um, said she must have been around when he said this to Black Bolt. You find Mary, you tell her that her man didn't want to leave her. So, you know, that resonates with them. And so they, uh, she has this emotional time. Bleaky shares all the emotions, the things that he told her while they're in prison together. And uh, she's kind of sad. So her attitude changes. She invites him over and, you know, they have a funeral for him. It's kind of a sad funeral. Even this guy, this bartender guy, just like, yeah, he was kind of a joke, but, you know, at least he was a good guy, you know. And uh, they had this uh, funeral, and uh, Captain America shows up. And so this is weird, and uh, he hears about what happened. Um, I think Bleaky shows him. It's like he showed, she showed everybody else. And then uh, so he gives a Captain America speech. He says, can I say some words, you know? And it's kind of like a good uh, all-around lesson in life, period. 
Um, at last, when he was given a choice, he gave his own life to save others, to save children. If I can't condone the life he lived, I can at least salute the end he chose. It was a hero's end. And so uh, this stuff uh, really resonated. And then like Thor shows up, and Thor wants to give a eulogy, and his buddies are like, oh, man, what's up with these good guys here? And Thor does the best he can in his, like, you know, insensitive way. But um, verily, verily, I say... <laughs> He died nobly and valiantly, so he gets a good, you know, um, I would like to say that I do not approve of this top panel here with Thor. I do not approve. I do not approve. Um, <clears throat> I do not approve of this panel here. <laughs> the, uh, these guys, I'll, I'll try to do the guy of you. See, these Wrecking Crew guys are just too normie looking. I mean, even Captain America, they don't got that mesomorph body. They're not buff. You know, they're just kind of like these dudes wearing rubber suits. Even Thor's kind of lame looking. Um, so, uh, this artist's um, superhero anatomy is just regular old I go to the gym guy anatomy. It's just not even uh, real exciting to look at. Uh, but, anyways, anyways, personal opinion. All right. So anyways, what's going to happen at the funeral? Yeah, it gets crushed by some uh, some inhumans from Orotilin. And the Orotilins uh, do not like Black Bolt. They think he abandoned them, etc., etc., etc. So um, anyway, they're going to fight. And uh, it turns out that the jailer hijacked the... Um, hid somewhere inside the body of Blinky. And at one point, uh, Blinky comes out. The jailer pops up out of her. She kind of grows out, you know, and then uh, they have to fight the jailer again. Well, good thing Titania is on the ball. You know, she goes, she takes off, and she actually goes, uh, Lockjaw comes to get her. Uh, they have all these emotional, supposedly like inner turmoil moments with their past selves and their childhood. Like, you know, boring, boring. Okay. Then, um... This kind of thing is kind of cool. Like I mentioned, this panel layouts, but there's all kinds of things happening here. It's uh, bending the gutters, you know. I think that's kind of a cool, cool design element. Yeah, he finally, finally gets his voice. He says it's over, and he blows everybody up with his voice. Fine, at the very end. They see this weirdo computer nerd guy at the end, and that, he was the jailer the whole time. Okay, sure. Anyways, he hugs his son. They all get on. Everyone's happy. She's playing Xbox. He's kicking back on the couch. And, 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 and then kind of, you know, Medusa shows up at the end and he floats up to the top to go see her and they're back together. So, <clears throat> I kind of like it. Uh, it was not that bad. There is some bad kind of, just bad. I mean, congratulations, you got to be uh, doing some comic book art. But uh, the flashbacks, there's a section where he's flashing back to his uh, previous life and stuff. And it's like this photo bashing photoshop kind of weirdness going on like this guy's not even muscled up at all I mean look at that body that's it and they're kind of doing this little weird adventure and, and uh, you go for that kind of stylized atmospheric art to this kind of like, what where is that yeah this panel here this page just weird so ah whatever Anyways, this is the Ballad of Crusher Creel. I mean, he makes a big change. Uh, he even uh, comes back from the dead. He comes and fights uh, beside everybody, and uh, they win. I don't want to bet the panel. Okay. So, um, but he comes back. And so this thing with Black Bolt is, he's just kind of a passive character throughout this uh, journey. He doesn't do much to change what happens. He's always fighting his inner turmoil with his dad, his son etc and uh it seems like everything just kind of happens despite him or um he doesn't do nothing really changed the plot i guess uh, and both volume one and volume two i'm waiting the whole entire book 
for him to use his voice, you know, to blow some away so they can get out. And he finally does it once. Um, maybe that's just reason he's not that popular of a character, just because it's just, you know, he's cool when he's that mysterious guy sitting on the throne and people have to speak for him. And every now and then he like destroys something with his voice. I get it; it's cool. But um, man, the, the uh, Carl Creel story really stole it for me on this one. I thought that was the best part. Um, the artwork was okay. Uh, it's very different like your normal comic book art but uh i like i said i approve of about 65 70 percent of it i didn't like the photo bashing weird photoshop thing they do i know the guy needs a break you know to catch up but uh on the artwork but you know, there's no need to, no reason to do all that hire someone who does lines that'd be good so i don't know well you like black bolt um kind of vague character i'm just reviewing stuff that i've read not that it's really relevant or people are out wondering when the next Black Bolt book's coming out. So, um, uh, you know, don't get all offended. Um, I'm not, I like this stuff, but um, it could get done a little bit better. But uh, who am I? He got to get an Eisner Award or something for this thing, too. So someone liked it. And it is different. It is off the cuff. It's very uh, atmospheric and abstract. If you're into that kind of thing so I don't know I know it was on sale last week so you can pick it up maybe get it for cheap <laughs> but uh, I like this uh, eh. you can tell I'm kind of hamming and haw about it I'm not really sure how I feel but uh, thanks for watching uh, do check out Star Wars uh, the Dark Hunter uh, my free Star Wars fan fic written and drawn by me on webtoons go ahead and check it out right now Thanks for watching.